what's up guys welcome back to the channel it's giselle here and it's time to use my echo location Ooh. on a serious note what's up guys welcome back to the channel and this is my graduation cap from 2017 do you like it does anyone know who this guy is and where he's from and if you know comment down below i want to see your disney knowledge Oh, I just took a shower and I just came home from work. It was a very long day, let me tell you that. Last time I talked to you guys, I worked graveyard. And then yesterday, I worked from 7 a.m. to 7.45 p.m. when originally I was supposed to get off at 5.30 p.m. And today I worked from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. We were able to catch up and whatnot, so I didn't have to stay over time to help. But tomorrow I am 8.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. As you can see, life of a per diem, your shifts are everywhere so if you decide to be pretty in somewhere just know that that's what's gonna happen it is what it is let's just say that oh by the way i forgot do you like my new light setup? Babes actually put this up for me on Thursday after I filmed that video of if you want to do ultrasound here's my advice kind of thing he really <laughs> liked my background and he thought he'd add to it Yay. and I love lights so it gives my room a good vibe I have these blackout curtains specifically for the days that I work graveyards today we are going to talk about something that has been requested from one of you guys how you get into an ultrasound program these programs all over the United States and even the world is gonna vary I'm going to talk about it a little bit in general what you need to have to get into one of those types of programs then I'm gonna go into depth with what I had to do in my program over here in the west coast without further ado let's get started starting off with prerequisites these vary from school to school but in general they're all pretty much the same generally you're going to need to take classes such as anatomy biology physiology physics psychology and medical terminology so those are going to be your main classes to get you into that program then once you get all those prerequisites usually you'll be able to apply to the program and in my case it's a little bit different so i'm going to talk about it now so where i went to school i had to take prerequisites to get into the program but because the program is so competitive they wanted us to do all of the prerequisites plus all of the radiology classes that you need to take to get into the program prior to the year of me getting into the program it was different you could just take the prereqs apply for the program get into the program and then take the extra radiology classes now you have to actually do the prerequisites, take the radiology classes and the ultrasound specific classes just to get into the program. So it is a little bit of a longer time to get into the program, but it just makes sure that you have all of the classes ready to go before you go to clinicals and go practice ultrasound all day long and you don't have to worry about any classes so it's actually pretty cool the way that they do it now like i said this will vary from state to state in our case that's what we had to do so to start off with my actual program our prereqs included english 101 and english 102 and i took two math classes math 126 and 128 which i believe are algebra classes and pre-calc and trigonometry honestly i'm not that great at math so if I can get through it, you can get through it. Then I had to take a few requirements in humanities and fine arts. So those are just kind of like classes like history of rock, women's studies. Your school is going to have different options for you to decide what to go into. Take something that's interesting and that will make you want to actually learn so that you can pass the class with an A because that's like a GPA booster, you know? The most important classes that you're going to take for prereqs are your biology and anatomy and physiology classes. For our case, we had to take bio 189, which was one of the hardest, and I don't know why, but hardest biology classes. Like everybody didn't pass their first time taking that class and I was one of them. So I actually took bio 189 twice and then I was able to take bio 223 and bio 224, which is anatomy and physiology. The last basic science class that I had to take was physics. That is the last class that I had to take to start doing all of the radiology classes and the 
ultrasound classes because in order to get into certain classes you have to finish this other class first like you have to have that to get into this it's just one step at a time make sure wherever you go you talk to your counselor or whoever's in charge there to help you figure out what your track is and what classes you need to take so that you can basically just check it off of a list and get through it after i took all of my prereqs i was able to take the radiology classes these were the classes that really help you ease into the ultrasound classes you can take these while you're doing the ultrasound classes as well it just depends these classes included introduction to medical imaging patient care in medical imaging radiation science and radiation biology my favorite class out of all of them was a sexual anatomy and imaging class because that was mainly like cat scans ultrasounds x-rays mris and they would show us images and we would have to know what they were label them and it really helped us with learning anatomy and actually seeing what it's going to look like when you get into the field the five ultrasound classes that i had to take was ultrasound physics and instrumentation abdomen obstetric gynecologic and vascular these are all the types of ultrasound exams that you're going to see when you go and do general ultrasound after you take all those classes you're pretty much ready for clinicals those clinicals count for credits and during those clinical semesters you're also going to have an imaging case study class where you just take something that you found in clinical and you make a powerpoint or something and you present it i'm not sure if everywhere does that but at my school we had to do that so in total all of the credits including my prerequisites and my ultrasound classes and radiology classes turned out to be about 120 more or less and it took me maybe about two to three years just for the specific radiology ultrasound and clinical stuff no matter where you go everything is pretty much the same kind of like how in ultrasound the protocol is going to be pretty much the same wherever you work but there's just going to be a couple little different things here and there that go with that specific program that you're going to go to school can take you from between two years to four years sometimes people have a hard time passing classes they don't take a lot of classes in one semester so you could take a couple years to do this however long it takes you just don't give up if it's something that you really want to do because there will always be a need for ultrasound technologists and if you really want to become one the only thing that's stopping you is you so if you guys have any more questions on prerequisites or classes or my program itself, if you're in the area, don't be afraid to shameless plug, DM me on my Instagram, or comment below. And I'll definitely answer all of your questions. On to the next part of this question. Finding a job. Finding a job for me was honestly fairly easy just because I was able to get a job straight from the people that I work with at clinical. As far as advice goes, treat every clinical site like a job interview because you never know what connection you can get from those people. So I was able to work for a company right after graduation and I would go to different doctor's offices and long-term care facilities and scan there. Honestly, finding a job was really easy for me and here in the valley, for all the people that I know, it's been pretty easy for them too. Most of them get hired at their clinical spots right after. That's good news, right? Don't be afraid to put in all the effort that you can to try to get a job at your clinical site because it really can happen. As far as salary goes, the salary in our area here kind of varies. Salary in ultrasound actually varies in itself because if you do general ultrasound in a hospital or general ultrasound in outpatient, general ultrasound at a doctor's office versus doing echoes, which is echocardiogram at the hospital or somewhere else everyone's salary is going to be different they also pay you according to experience most of the time on top of that there's if you're full-time versus per diem so the rates really do change here and there different hospitals give you different raises i would say it ranges between sixty thousand dollars to even up to a hundred thousand dollars and if you guys want to know how much i made my first year of being an ultrasound technologist go ahead and like this video and if it gets up to 50 likes, I'll go ahead and talk about how much I made the first year because that is something you guys are probably interested in. 
with all of that being said i just want to say if you're on your ultrasound journey keep going keep pushing it's going to be worth it in the end because i was there we were all there we all were scared didn't think that we were going to get through it had no idea if we were going to understand anything and honestly if you put your mind to it you're going to be able to do it that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed if it helped you guys and you want to see more please subscribe to the channel we are going from small youtuber family to medium-sized youtuber family and we're getting there because we made it to 300 Yay! so thank you guys so much for watching my videos and we'll see you on the next one bye